Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel and in this video I will be presenting a topic from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology with the title Bridge Presentation. What is Bridge Presentation? Bridge Presentation or Predalic Presentation is when the buttocks of the fetus occupy the lower segment of the uterus and Bridge Presentation occurs in about 3-4% to of all deliveries. So types of bridge there is a full or complete bridge, otherwise known as the cannonball position, that occurs in 5-10%. to 10 And then there's incomplete bridge, frank bridge, otherwise known as bike position, that occurs in 50-70%. to 70%, And footling bridge, that happens in 10-30% to 30 of cases. So here is an image of bridge presentations, the variations of bridge presentations, complete, incomplete, and frank bridge. Types of bridge. Full or complete bridge entails that the arms and the legs are flexed. Then there's incomplete bridge, and with the frank bridge, there's the, the arms are flexed, but the legs are extended straight up over the head. They are close to the face. Footling bridge entails that one or both feet extended downwards and may exit the birth canal first. All right. So with bridge presentation, the lie is longitudinal. The presentation is bridge. The denominator is the sacrum. The positions are left sacro anterior, which is the commonest, right sacro anterior, left sacro posterior, and right sacro posterior positions, respectively. And here is an image um, showing the types of presentations and the lie. So, etiology the first would be prematurity due to rotation, and it is the commonest. And the second uh, point on etiology is the factor preventing spontaneous versions. These factors are number one, bridge with extended legs, twin pregnancies, oligohydroamnios, congenital malformations of the uterus, for example, septate uterus, biconuate uterus, and if there's a short cord or there's a contracted pelvis. Thirdly, on the etiology is the favorable adaptation. If it's a pregnancy that has placenta previa, a contracted pelvis, then definitely a bridge will occur. Or undue mobility of the fetus with hydrocephalus or a multiparo with lax abdomen. Um, recurrent bridge. Recurrent bridge is the... Recurrent bridge means that there are three consecutive bridge pregnancies, and the causes are congenital malformed uterus, contracted pelvis, and corneal attachment of placenta. So to diagnose bridge presentations, we need to take history. And if we find that there was a previous bridge presentation, then we can uh, narrow our diagnosis to a bridge. Second would be abdominal examination, fundal grip. On palpation, you will feel that it's hard and there's a round bulletable head. And for lateral grip on part patient, you will realize that the fetal back on one side is palpable as smooth curved structure, whereas limbs on the other side are felt as small irregular structures. And on the pelvic grip, we can palpate that there is a broader, softer and irregular mass with ill-defined outline. And as for fetal health sounds, they are uh, auscultated above the umbilicus before engagement and below the umbilicus if it is after engagement. So... Further on under diagnosis, we can talk about the pelvic examinations. And during pregnancy, um, pelvic examination will show that it is soft and irregular parts are felt, fetal parts are felt. And during labor, palpation of issue tuberosities, the sacrum and its spine, sole of the foot, genitalia and the anus are felt. Um, all right. So further on, we can do ultrasonography and on vaginal examination, the presenting parts um, of the bridge, you can feel, of course, the palpation of the issue tuberosities, the sacrum, in spine, and salt to food, genitalia, and anus that can be palpated. In bridge present, in frank bridge presentation, you can palpate the issue tuberosities, the sacrum, and its spine, the genitalia, and the anus on vaginal on vaginal examination. And as for footling pre presentations, you can palpate, um, um, you can palpate the sole of the foot. Well, for diagnosis, we use ultrasonography to confirm and to detect the gestational age, the weight of the baby, localization of the placenta, um, the liquid volume, the attitude of the fetus, to detect the uterine ab anomalies, and to detect the fetal congenital abnormalities. X-ray of the abdomen is a is the last option that can be that can be done. 
Okay, so now to talk about management of breach. Under management of breach, there are three types of um, three steps, three types of approaches: continental management, um, management at term, management during labor. Okay, my slides are a little bit fast. Now, continental management. Here, you have to identify the complicating factor, and if there's an ex and you try you attempt the external cephalic version. If it is not contraindicated, that is a 32 to 34 weeks. If it fails, you repeat the version after one week. And management at term. This is where you plan the method of delivery. If it is it an electric elective cesarean section, or you can give a bridge uh, vaginal delivery and. So criteria indication of for vaginal bridge delivery. So for vaginal bridge delivery, if the estimated fetal weight is 2.5 to 3 kgs, then go ahead. If the cervix is soft and defaced, if the, there's adequate maternal pelvis, if there's no high-risk pregnancy and malformed fetus or dead fetus, then go ahead and give a bridge, bridge delivery, a vaginal bridge delivery, sorry, pardon me. And as for C-section, or premier gravida with bridge, premature babies, big babies, cervix is unfavorable, inadequate maternal pelvis, high-risk pregnancy, bad obstetric history, elderly premier gravida, early rupture of membrane, bridge associated with intrauterine growth retardation, and a footling bridge. Management during labor, the first stage, you have to tell your patient to have a bed rest in lateral position to prevent early rupture of membranes and cord prolapse. Secondly, if, it's, if there's no more progress, put your patient on liquid diet. Thirdly, if there's a delay in progress, um, give the patient new paos, nothing per oral. And fourthly, adequate parenteral nutrition and perform another vaginal examination only when the membranes have ruptures to, ruptured to exclude cord prolapse. And lastly, adequate sedation and analgesia to prevent um, adequate... Well, to prevent um, premature bear down. The second stage, there are three types of vaginal bridge deliveries that I described. So if it's a spontaneous bridge delivery, assisted bridge delivery, or bridge extraction um, stages that you can use under vaginal bridge deliveries. All right. So for spontaneous bridge delivery, spontaneous vag vaginal bridge delivery, the expulsion of the fetus occurs with with very little assistance. And uh, for the second assisted bridge delivery, the delivery of the fetus is assist is um is by assistance from the beginning to the end of the delivery. Um, this is where the patient's buttocks are brought to the edge of the table and legs in the lithotomy position, and she is catheterized by sterile plastic plastic catheter. And then liberal mediolateral episiotomy is done with um, local anesthesia. So for bridge extraction, this is when the entire body of the fetus is extracted by the obstetrician with minimum aid from the mother in an emergency situation such as fetal distress. So delivery of after coming head in vaginal bridge delivery. The following are the common methods used and we will discuss them shortly beginning with the bun mushroom method. So the bun mushroom method, this is where the baby's trunk is allowed to hang by its own for a while, but never for more than one minute. And when the nape of the neck is visible under the pubic arch, the baby's trunk is gradually lifted up and swung up towards mother's abdomen by holding baby's leg above the ankles, thus the head is delivered. Um, meanwhile, the left hand is left to guard the perineum as seen in the image. All right, so then forceps delivery is also an option whereby forceps can be used as a routine and considered as the best method if there is a skilled person. The baby is lifted up by the assistance, assistance by grasping baby's ankles. The forceps is applied from below the trunk of, of the baby on the baby's head at the level by parietal diameters, and the head is gently delivered with mouth appearing at the vulva when the mouth is aspirated by mucus sucker as seen in the, vi in, the, in the image. And the second procedure would be uh, jaw flexion and shoulder traction with, under the method known as Mauricio Smelly Veet Technique. So the head lying above the pelvic outlet, the baby is placed on the supinated left forearm with the limbs hanging on either side. The middle and the index finger of the left hand are placed over the malar bones on either side and this maintains flexion of the head. The ring and the little fingers of the pronated right hand are placed on the baby's 
uh, right shoulder, the index finger is placed on the right shoulder, and the middle finger is placed on the suboccipital region. So, traction is now given. So basically with this method, the slide above explains it in more details. And then this method, this method should be employed preferably under general anesthesia. So let's talk a little bit about management of complicated bridge delivery. And the problems which may arise during bridge delivery, uh, arrest of the buttocks, shoulder arrest, after coming head arrest. So as for arrest of the buttocks, the cause is a weak uterine contraction for in uterine inertia and the management is oxytocin injection. Rigid perineum where the management is liberal episiotomy and with bridge, a uh, bridge with extended leg, the management is Pinard's maneuver. And secondly, in Pinard's manu uh, uh, further, furthermore, in Pinard's maneuver, the patient should be under general anesthesia. The palmar surface of the obstetrician is to be introduced facing the ventral surface of the fetus. The bridge is pushed up at least to the level of the symphysis pubis. Middle and index fingers should apply pressure in the popliteal fossa and abduction of the fossa is done, which causes partial flexion of the leg. The head is flexed by other hand abdominally, externally, and the foot is brought down by grasping at the ankle by internal fingers. And lastly, the other leg is brought down in the same manner. So as for shoulder arrest, I'll wait for the slide. So, as for shoulder arrest, the cause is usually the ex when the arms are extended and the management is love sets maneuver. So, love sets maneuver is basically the maneuver that should start only when the an inferior angle of the scapula is visible underneath the pubic arch. The baby is grasps, grasped under both hands by femoral pelvic grip. Keeping the thumbs parallel to the vertebral column, the baby is lifted up slightly to cause lateral flexion. The trunk is rotated 180 degrees, keeping the back anterior and maintaining downward traction. This will bring the posterior arm to emerge under the pubic arc, which is then hooked up. The trunk is then rotated in the, in the reverse direction, um, keeping the back anterior to deliver the anterior shoulder under the symphysis pubic. So lastly, after coming head arrest is caused by deflexed head where the jaw flexion and the shoulder traction, contracted pelvis where you give emergency C-section, high up head, and you give forceps delivery. If there's a hydrocephalus, give craniotomy. So complications of bridge, deli uh, bridge presentation are two types, fetal and maternal. So as for fetal, there's birth asphyxia due to cord compression, delayed delivery of the head, retraction of the placenta, premature attempts for aspiration while the head is still inside, and intracranial hemorrhage, which is due to sudden decompression of the unmolded head. If it is delivered suddenly, causing tear to the tentorium cerebri and hemorrhage in the subarachnoid space. Oh, further on down the list is the hematoma in the stenomastoid muscle, fractures and dislocation of cervix spines, cervical spines, femur, humerus, hip joints, um, visceral injuries, rupture of liver, kidneys due to pressure or faulty handling prolapsed cord, um, nerve injuries, stretching of the brachi brachial plexus causes herbs and columbicus, columbicus palsy. And all these leads... All this leads to an increase in perinatal mobility, morbidity and mortality. So as far as the maternal complications, there is increased operative delivery, rupture of the uterus, lacerations and tear of the uterus, lacerations and tear of the cervix and the vaginal, pardon me, um, extensions of the uh, episiotomy and deep perineal tears, anesthesia can cause uterine atony, which will lead to postpartum hemorrhage. Um, maternal infection, and puerperal sepsis. So prevention of the fetal and maternal complications basically is the external cephalic lesions. If there's no contraindication, um, if, vision is fa if there's a failure of the procedure of external cephalic vision or it's contract contraindicated, the delivery is done by an elective C-section and vaginal bridge delivery or manipulation should be done only by a skilled obstetrician. Thank you so much for watching my presentation and I hope to see you again on my channel. Bye-bye.